If you're looking at this, you are probably like me and are looking for the best uh, trimmer that's out there. Uh, I went through a lot of research. Um, I didn't believe the hype and I certainly didn't want to spend the money. But every guy I know who owns one of these wouldn't trade it for his mother. So it's the Gerard Power Trimmer. Uh, I use mine standing up like this. That's why the label's upside down. Uh, I know some people use it. Uh, you can you can actually flip it and use it this way, uh, where you're sticking the brass in horizontally. Uh, I much prefer the vertical method with it, and uh, he makes it so it orients both ways. I mean, without a problem. Uh, I like doing this because then all of my shavings are going to fall straight down, and nothing gets wrapped up in here. Before I get started, let me just say, uh, if you got a pile of brass like this, and this happens to be roughly 450 pieces of 284, and you need to trim them all, uh, you know, there's a lot of ways to do it. The beauty of this is it does it fast, it does it incredibly accurately, and it chamfers and deburs at the same time, so you're really doing three steps at once. Now, I've done other reviews on other trimmers, and I, I wholeheartedly think that for the money, those are very tough to beat. Uh, I did the Lyman one recently, and it is a great unit for 140 bucks or whatever you can pick it up for. Uh, it does a very, very good job, but it will not deburr and chamf chamfer at the same time. Uh, so, the way Gerard sends these, he typically has uh, one of these little call-it systems, uh, he does one for just about every caliber you can think of. And they are spring-loaded. So, you can see that, right? Now, I like the spring. It works just fine. I will tell you, it is a pain in the ass to try to set. At least I find it is. Um, I just don't like it um, like this. And... Depending on the cartridge you're doing, there is, um, you know, a little bit of slop in um, in the unit itself. Uh, it works fantastic with the factory thing. I will show you a trick that I learned from somebody else, though, is I had my gunsmith just take a piece of barrel and thread it up. It's a regular 7 8 14 pitch um, die thread. And all he did is ream my chamber straight into this. So it takes all the spring out of it and it makes it so there is virtually no wobble with the brass. So when it goes in, it's there. And, uh, you know, once he was done with it, all I did is took a, uh, a bore brush with a little bit of uh, steel wool and just really polished out the inside a little bit and it works great. The cutting mechanism, and this is gonna be hard to see, but the cutting mechanism is a little triangle blade uh, that's right up in there, and you can just barely see it. And the goal is so that when you have everything set correctly, see how it fits right in the little valley of those two mountains? And it's not gonna sit perfectly because this is uncut brass, but as it spins around, it's deburring, chamfering, and trimming all at the same time. Uh, you can adjust with this little screw. It'll let, it lets that blade go left or right so you can center it. Depending on when you are going to cut um, your blade or cut your brass, you're going to put the blade in the correct position. Now, most people are going to trim right after resizing. Um, I know a few guys who uh, do it after they have... Um, expanded the neck. Either way, you want to make sure that you are always trimming it at the same diameter so that you can leave this set. He sells extra cutting heads too, so if you are doing multiple calibers, you simply replace the uh, the collet up here, you unscrew this cutting unit out, screw in the new cutting unit, and all of your cutting dimensions are saved. Uh, it's a little triangle blade. It's hard to see, but it, you know you can see it looks like a mountain. And then there's actually another one on this side and then hiding in the groove over here is another cutter. So you can actually, um, I have yet to do it and I've had this thing for years, but uh, if this blade ever wears out, I can flip it over and go to this corner and then to this corner. Uh, he uses just an incredibly high quality 
uh, cutting blade on this thing. It's it's pretty darn amazing. So um, it just screws right in. It's very easy to change out. And um, I'll just get a little bit more light on it here. But you can see how there's a kind of a cutout area chamber below uh, down in here. And that's where the brass is going to collect. Uh, he's got a nice little plastic cover that slides over it like that. And I'm not going to bore you with a setup type video. Just know that this thing's set up to cut exactly how I want it to and to the length I want it to. And uh, let me show you what it does here. It also happens to be very quiet. So you'll hear it. And I give it just a little turn and that's it. So every time, that's it. And you can see how fast, you know, we just did four pieces. Uh, just, uh, I mean, crazy fast. I mean, I honestly, I can do this whole bucket in, uh, I don't know, I think it was like 20 minutes last time, maybe 30 minutes if I'm really going slow. Um, I can jam through brass on this thing like no tomorrow. Uh, so take a look at that though. That's really the key of what this does. I mean, look at the bevel on the outside. Really nice bevel. Eh, damn autofocus. Uh, you know, really, there you go. Really nice. And again, it's accurate. Um, when I mic these out, uh, it's cutting within half a thousandth of each other every single time. Uh, other beauty of it, uh, especially, you know, his his um, spring collet system, same thing as mine, but it's indexing off the shoulder, which I'm a really big fan of. Um, even though you're trimming to an overall length, I really like knowing that the sh the, the shoulder is controlling the, the actual um, overall depth cut here. Um, I feel like it just comes out a little more accurate that way. Um, and to be fair, that was something I really liked about the Lyman unit too. Uh, this thing, I've had it for years now. Uh, it is just a workhorse. Uh, I keep it really clean. I, I bought a little toolbox. I put it in when I'm done so it doesn't collect dust in the motor. Uh, I blow it out regularly. And uh, I'll do a few more. You can see how the brass collects here. Show me another system that can do it this fast, this accurately, and deburr and chamfer, I'll buy it. But uh, there ain't nothing out there. Um, I mean, the thing's just ridiculously fast. You can get a better idea here of your shavings. Uh, my wife, it's kind of funny, but my wife does um, art that she sells. And uh, she actually collects all my shavings and uses it in her uh, acrylic painting for uh, for metallic, uh, give it a little depth. Uh, so I always end up having to be very careful about saving all my shavings and collecting it into a little Ziploc bag for her. So it's silly, but she likes it. Uh, that's all there is to it. Uh, I will tell you that uh, Doug Gerard is a great guy to work with. I've called him several times for help over the years. Um, while he wouldn't know who I am, uh, by any means, I will say that he's always treated me like somebody he does know and, uh, answers questions, has sent out parts, has fixed, um, I had a, uh, I had a piece that, um, because I was sizing uh, a special way, uh, it didn't fit the standard size. I sent my little piece back. He milled it back out with a piece of my brass, um, as a guide. Uh, it worked beautifully after that. Uh, so really good guy to work with. So anyway, there you go.